And finally, at this end of the kitchen, we have this Dometic fridge, which is just a completely standard fitting. It's also broken. <laughs> Let's pick that up. Welcome to Not Another White Box. My name is Cameron, and this is the channel that brings you all that's cool, quirky, and unusual in the caravan world. Today, we're at the NEC Caravan and Motorhome Show, and we're gonna take an in-depth look at the Tab 400 TD. This particular one is the Metropolis spec, and there are three specs on offer. The Basic, which is fairly explanatory, the Mexican Sunset, which we've taken a look at before on my channel, and this, the Metropolis spec, which is kind of like the modern, sleek, sort of a little bit classy looking spec of the three. So, as you will know, if you've seen my channel before, I absolutely love this caravan. So it's not even a question of, will it, won't it be not another white box approved? I think I have to quietly admit of every modern caravan that's available between this and the La Moncelle range of caravans, these are probably what I would actually spend my money on. So why is that? Why do I like it so much? Let's take a look together and find out why this caravan is so cool. The first thing that instantly grabs your attention with the tab is the amazing shape of it. It's a beautiful traditional teardrop style, but as you can see, I'm five foot 10. It's not a, mi a miniature teardrop caravan. It is a full conventional height and width, normal touring caravan. I just love the shape of it. Something like this is just gonna really cut through the wind and tow exceptionally well behind any car. And at the sort of weight these caravans are at, they're going to be very easy to tow and very easy to maneuver and just overall a very hassle-free touring experience. This particular shape is well well over half a century old. There have been tons of variants of caravans with this style from Germany and the tab range um, was actually introduced in the early 2000s about 2002-2003 and it fundamentally remains unchanged despite a lot of extensive cosmetic tweaks. The shape and style of it is exactly the same now as it was 20 years ago. And I think you can agree if you're watching this, it still looks so cool and modern and contemporary. And that's also partly thanks to the, the Metropolis spec, which just makes it look very current and very stylish. Um, as you know, I love orange, hence the shirt. <laughs> So the Mexican sunset spec, uh, which we've looked at before on my channel, is definitely something that I love just because it's a little bit bonkers. But I have to be honest, when I've actually seen these on the road, it's this particular caravan that I see the most of. And I think that's just because it looks so cool and a bit classy as well, really. Starting at the front of the tab at the drawbar end, um, it's got a full German Alco chassis, which is pretty much standard. So if you're worried about having one because it's not a British caravan, Servicing the chassis and all the important bits is not something you're going to have to worry about. It has a standard Alco hitch. There's no need for a stabilizer hitch on this model because of its shape, because of how well balanced it is. You're not going to have any stability issues with this caravan whatsoever, so long as you stick to your sensible, usual loading rules. It's also got a buttonless Alco handbrake with gas assisted um, strut underneath to make it easier to operate. 13 pin electrics is standard and this really cool ergonomically shaped gas locker, which is absolutely huge. It's made of ABS plastic and it's painted to match the caravan. In here, you'll fit two large gas cylinders. Um, you'll easily get two six kilogram cylinders in here if your nose weight allows. And a little feature that you always see on German vans is these wheel chocks, which store neatly in here and have dedicated clips for them. So that's actually a very usable space there um, for not only keeping the gas, but also keeping some of the ancillaries that you need for touring. The body shell is made of aluminium and it's bonded construction throughout. So it's very strong, uh, very resistant to dents. And again, the curved nature of the shape means that it has amazing inherent strength. And typically with these caravans, you don't tend to see them have many issues with damp. Um, I've followed these tab caravans since they first launched in Britain in the early 2000s. And the only areas of water ingress that you tend to see on older second-hand models is just due, due to window seals at the front. So all in all, you've got amazing German build quality. You've got an amazing curvaceous design that not only looks great, but adds strength. 
And thanks to this graphics package with the Metropolis spec, which basically means that you get the Metropolis graphics and everything's finished in this kind of charcoal gray color. The whole thing is just really cohesive. Um, it looks really great. And it just means that this shape, which just remains timeless, keeps looking fashionable and trendy. Another thing, if I just close the door a second, that I absolutely love about the tab is the round porthole windows. They don't actually open, they're fixed, but that's not really an issue because the kitchen window and the very large front window do open. So these are just to let in a bit of extra light, but they look so cool. The Metropolis comes as standard with steel wheels, which, you know what, I'm actually not mad at. And I think there's certainly a thing amongst younger generations like myself, where particularly in the car world, we love that kind of standard spec look. Um, I'll probably get in trouble for saying this, but we always joke it's the poverty spec. <laughs> but on this caravan, this really works. It looks good. Um, and you can have alloy wheels as an optional extra if you wish. This rear access locker here was also an optional extra, um, but they tend to include it as standard now, especially on show models. This gives you direct access to underneath the rear bunk, so you can easily put in your awning, or uh, camping chairs, etc. Um, and speaking of awnings, there is a full custom Isabella awning that will fit on the Tab Caravan, both a canopy and a full awning, which is also shaped to the Tab. Finally, at the back end of the Tab, this is where the design comes to a peak and it just looks so cool. It's like nothing else you'll see on the campsite. Uh, from the rounded rear light clusters, which are all LED lights throughout on this caravan, to just this large picture window, which does actually open slightly for ventilation. The whole thing is incredible. And if you want to take this one further um, and have a little bit more spec added, you can get bars which are installed from the factory on the back to take a bike rack or luggage rack. It all goes to show that this caravan is not just a whimsical idea, it's actually a practical and adaptable touring caravan to whatever your needs may be. But now we've taken a look at the outside, let's go see why the inside is just as impressive. Starting at the front end of the interior um, is this little lounge, which really, although it's billed as a three berth, because this does convert into a bed, it is, I would say, more of a two berth. You've got the fixed bed at the back and you've got this area at the front um, to sit and relax. The only criticism I have of the model really, um, and it's purely just the limitations, I mean this caravan is barely 12 feet long, roughly about 4 metres, so it is actually a very compact caravan. But naturally that means there's limitations with the interior space, so this is the compromise here. You have the dinette to sit at, which thanks to these shaped cushions and in typical German style, they are very thick and luxurious. Um, you really only have space to sit. If you want to sort of lie down and read a book, you probably want to do that on the bed at the other end. But down here, it just adds to the engagement with the design here. Rather than it being a conventional squared off dinette, you've got this little extra long bit here um, and the table is shaped to just guide you in to the dinette. Probably if you've seen this layout before in many other caravans, in fact, this layout minus the fixed bed used to be pretty staple feature of the caravan industry in the 60s, 70s and 80s. You may remember what it's like to squeeze around the bathroom to get into the spot that's opposite. And what Tab have done here is just completely rejig this dinette area to make it an easy space to use and an easy space to access. The big picture front window is a custom window to this caravan. It's curved to match the body shell. And this opens fully and has ratchet window stays so you don't have to fiddle around with window screws. You might have noticed behind me that the porthole window isn't immediately here, but set further back. For in here is this kind of, I don't know, it doesn't really have a great obvious practical purpose, but inside is shelves for storage. And I would suggest this is really a great place to store books or um, you know, perhaps keep your house plant if you take that with you on holiday. <laughs> I don't really know, but it's quirky, it's cool, and it's just moved this dinette a little bit further into the middle of the caravan, again, making this an easy place to access. We've got these wire racks up here, which make the use of the space at the front, um, two 40 volt um, sockets up here, 
spotlights which are adaptable and in true German style there is a ceiling lamp with a proper lampshade which is something that Germans for some reason have been obsessed with and I think it's a very European thing. To all my European friends who are watching this video let me know what your obsession is with these lamps and caravans because they've been around since the 50s and they're still fitting them. Not criticising it, I absolutely love it. It's, it just focuses the light on the dining table and this end feels like a little bit more than just a dinette in a caravan. It does feel like a cosy dining experience. And talking of the dining experience, that brings me neatly onto the kitchen, which for the size of the caravan just defies convention because this kitchen is really, really well thought out and really well designed. What we have here is rather than a square kitchen unit like you see in the vast majority of caravans now, what they've done is they've bought the curved sink a little bit further forward and out. So it has a curved edge to it, which not only adds style and flair, it kind of naturally guides you around the kitchen into the caravan and creates a little bit of a barrier between you and the outside door. The round kitchen sink is the deepest sink I've ever seen in a caravan, it's great. Um, and by moving it slightly to the side, what they've been able to do is move the cooker further back so it's safer, the hot pans are further away if you've got children running around or whatever. But what that does is it's created this worktop space in front which is incredibly useful. And I just think maximum points here uh, to tab for designing it in this way to really make the use of the space. Up above we have these roof lockers which have this trendy uh, acrylic style in the doors. I think it would be great if there was some kind of backlighting in here but again if you buy one that's something you can add. There's plenty of room up there and something that I'm used to seeing on vintage caravans which you never ever ever see on a modern caravan is a flat cupboard top. So what happens there is because of the curve of the roof they don't make the cupboards fit the shape of the roof. And what you end up with is this huge shelf that when you're on site you end up just filling with stuff. So believe me when I tell you that is a bit of an unsung hero of the caravan because when I use my old caravans which have the curved roof shape naturally and non-form fitting cupboards just like these you end up using that as a very practical space to just throw house keys, wallet, etc. Probably shouldn't admit that. Please don't rob my caravan if you see it. <laughs> but um, people might say, oh, it, it looks a bit naff because it doesn't fit, you know, the roof line. Um, but honestly, that is actually a secret feature of this that makes it very useful. But moving further down to the kitchen, there's plenty of storage, which again defies the size of the kitchen. In the middle, you have a knife and fork drawer, uh, and below that, you have this pull-out rack, which again, just really makes the use of the space. Instead of a silly tall cupboard that you've got to go rummaging, everything slides out into the middle of the caravan and makes it very easy to sort through whatever you've stored in there. And finally, at the front at this end, you have this curved kitchen unit, which has plenty of shelving inside and lots of space to store things. Um, the only thing that I can slightly criticise is there isn't really space for an oven here um, or a grill but perhaps you could have a, a portable halogen oven that goes on the worktop that would easily store in there. And at this end of the kitchen uh, we have a Dometic three-way fridge which is just a fairly standard fitting in caravans now and as if this worktop space wasn't enough there is a worktop extension piece that comes out here which is beautifully ergonomically fitted to just flow with the kitchen and work with it as a space. I might go out on a limb here and say that this could be one of the best designed kitchens that I've seen in a caravan. I know it has its limitations because there's not an oven or a grill, but you'd be amazed how many people who go camping aren't really bothered for an oven or grill. For some reason in Britain, we're obsessed with having ovens in caravans. I don't know if that's just an idea that harks back to the 1950s, but the Europeans just don't really care for them at all, even in really expensive caravans. So it's not really a surprise that you won't find one in the tab. But like I said, don't let that detract from how incredibly well designed this space is. I'll just say before I move on to the washroom and the wardrobe, um, like I mentioned, I'm 5 foot 10, so it gives you an idea of the size and scale of this caravan. I'm now stood at the back end of the kitchen where the roof has really started to um, slope off towards the back. 
and I can still stand up here perfectly fine. So don't sort of look at this caravan and think, oh, it looks really claustrophobic and small inside because it really isn't at all. But at the maximum height point of the caravan, they've put the washroom, which is an incredibly stylish and well thought out space. The washroom in the Tab 400 is one of my favourite washrooms that I've seen in a caravan. No, it is not the biggest for standing and having a shower in, but it is completely styled like something in a boutique hotel. To me, that's the theme of the Tab throughout, especially in this Metropolis spec, which just adds a very modern um, and sort of darker edge that just feels, like I said, it's like a kind of a luxury hotel escape here. From these curved cupboards, which you might be thinking, oh, they're not very practical. Wrong. They all have little lips built in, so although they look stylish, they are practical and your stuff isn't just going to fall everywhere when you tow it. You've got a moulded soap dish into the sink next to it, which again is very unusual. And another incredible space saving idea is that the tap actually is the shower as well. Incredible. There's loads of storage in here. Uh, there's various cupboards throughout below the sink where you can fit towels and toiletries. Even behind the toilet, there is a space to put spare toilet rolls and things like that. There's a blown air heating duct in here, so you needn't worry about being cold when you're going to use the loo. And we've also got the round pothole window, which doesn't actually open, but don't worry, there is plenty of ventilation from the skylight above. Overall, it may be a small space in here, but it's really just such a great space. Even the ambient lighting underneath the cupboards, this vanity unit with the lighting behind it, which presents yet more storage behind it. It's just a really well thought out space. And again, not really somewhere you'd probably use the shower very much, but in a caravan this size, are you going to find one that has a fully working, usable shower that you would find in a big conventional caravan? Probably not. It's here, it's usable, you can use it if you need to, but if you've got a caravan this size, you're probably going to book onto sites that have facilities anyway. And remember, in its native Germany, pretty much all campsites have good facilities, so the shower really is just a little bit of an afterthought. But I don't want to take away from what is a really well-designed space. Still got the loo, still got your sink, you can do all your ablutions in here, no problem at all. And just next to the washroom is the wardrobe, which is a very generous size with hanging space, plenty of racks for storing things. Uh, and in here we'll find the mains transformer unit tucked away and a few of the ancillaries for the heater. And talking of storage, we have the rear bed here and underneath is absolutely tons of easily accessible space. Down here you'll find the battery, you'll find some of the ancillaries for the water system. Um, there's loads of space here, but again, because it's at the back of the caravan, don't be too tempted to load it right up with all your camping gear at once. Remember to keep an eye on the nose weight and remember to load the caravan sensibly. But I'll talk about the bed now we're here. This end of the caravan does not feel claustrophobic to me. It feels cosy, it feels encompassing. It's got this huge picture window, which is electrically operated. I mean, that is painfully slow, but how cool is that? It feels like a very James Bond gadget to have in your caravan. There are full blackout blinds and fly screens to all windows. Uh, again, although it is perceived to be a basic spec, it's not really missing anything. And the quality of the appliances, such as the fully stainless steel sink, which you don't really see in caravans too much, um, and the higher quality cooker, just goes to show that this caravan is German, high quality, it means business. No part of this caravan feels flimsy or like it's going to break anytime soon. It feels like a caravan you could buy and you could have it for a long time. The bed is actually slightly larger than a standard double, plus you've got the full width of the caravan. At the far end you have a point for mounting the TV on the wall where you'll find an electric point and a place to hide the wires. At this end where you'll typically put your pillow, there is this neat little cubby hole next to the bed where you can put your phone to charge, reading lights and more shelving above. Tab have really thought of every inch of space in this caravan and they just use 
it to its fullest potential, which is the result of about 20 years of research development, listening to customer feedback, and just evolving this model into something that's not only stylish and contemporary, but incredibly practical to use as well. As you can tell, I am completely won over by this caravan. I would definitely have one. I would definitely spend my own money on one if I was in the market for a new caravan. I think it's something that you shouldn't dismiss for being quirky. It's incredibly well built. It's really well designed. And it's something that's so unusual that it just adds so much to the experience of the caravan. From the funny little light over the table at the front to this cozy area at the back with the James Bond window. It's an incredible caravan and I'm really happy to show you around it today. If you've enjoyed today's video, please do subscribe to the channel and let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you love this caravan as much as I do? Let me know what you think. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Still closing. You might want to schedule in when you're going to bed and start closing the window a bit before. <sighs> <laughs>